Welcome back to Damn Dad's Crazy Channel. And today, off of College Avenue and Baker Street, we're gonna visit the Kashua Ramen, a hidden gym inside Costa Mesa, Orange County, where the flavors of Japan cuisine meets the creativity of pop culture in the West. Nestled in this hard with vibrant community, Kashua is more than just a ramen shop. It's an experience you won't forget because it's ramen meant to be. Let's get it. With our collaborator, Spencer, who was a former employee at this Kashua Ramen. Yep. All right, so even the name here tells you about the region uh, that this broth comes from. Kashiwa is a city in Japan, and it's a pretty cold place, and so their specialty of ramen is the paitan broth. Uh, the paitan is a really rich, heavy broth that's made with um, chicken and potatoes, so it adds like this starchy texture to it. So when you when you drink the broth, it's really thick and rich, uh, whereas something like a tonkotsu, which is really famous everywhere else, is, is a pork broth. And that's really, really fatty, right? It's a different kind of richness. Um, so here, you know, most people, I think, haven't had a chicken ramen before they come here. So can you tell me a little bit about this man, this owner of a restaurant? Yeah, so this is Hiro right here. He's the owner of this business. Um, and you can usually find him here most days. Um, he had to step out, unfortunately. But he started out with an ice cream shop in Nevada. No, Arizona. Sorry. Um, and then after he had like really good success with that, he decided he wanted to bring his cultural heritage to California and he set up a ramen shop here. Um, it was inspired and supported by his friend Hide Kawahara, um, who runs a famous ramen shop in New York City. And he has, he's the son of the owner of all these ones in Japan that are really big. Um, there's not a big, that's, that's Hide right here. Um, you can usually find him in the kitchen wearing like off-white shoes and supreme everything and he's a total fashion killer really. The prices aren't up to date right now so that's why they're crossed out. Right, you can do just a plain ramen or a black garlic or a spicy black or a spicy miso right. These are the spice levels here so you can do level one, two or three. They have like habanero and stuff in the really spicy one. Um, down here are the special ramens. So the stemmen here, or you can say tsukemen, um, is a dipping broth. Really thick noodles, really thick broth. So you actually dip it, and then you, you eat the noodles separate from the broth. Right? Um, the kombu and the vegetable are for their vegans. Um, kombu is a type of seaweed. It's pretty good. Um, the soupless one is, is a newer item here. Um, he, he actually has a lot of specials that aren't even on here. We have to redesign the sheet all the time because he's always coming up with new stuff. Um, down here, you can pick between the chicken python broth. That's what they're famous for, the python. And then they also have tonkatsu now. Or they can mix them together, which is, which is kind of uncommon. Most places don't let you do that. Um, and then you can choose your protein here. Your noodles, they have slightly different textures between the wavy and the straight. And then here, this is the broth. So if you get normal, it's just the python broth, which is like really rich. Uh, or you can lighten it up with a bit of the kombu broth. So the seaweed broth from the kombu gets put in there just to, to make it a little bit thinner. Um, and then this is just toppings down here. So the gyoza here, they fold them by hand, they make them in house. This is half chicken and half pork, so you get a nice umami flavor. Um, there's some nice vinegar here that you dip it in. And this is the karage. There's some really juicy chicken thigh that's fried to perfect. Uh, you can get them with cold or hot noodles. These are thick, chewy noodles, right? Uh -huh. And the whole concept of this is this is a really rich, thick broth, and you dip it because it's really intense flavor. So you don't want to like drink it like this broth. 
Okay. Um, so when you dip it in, you pick it up, it carries all of the fat and delicious flavors with it, and you slip the noodles. Right, right. And then when you get about halfway through this bowl and like the flavors really, the richness is kind of getting to you, then you squirt this lime all over it. This and it sort right of cuts through the fat and it's refreshing, right? For yes, the rest sir. of the bowl. And then when you think you're done at the end, when you've got no noodles, you can actually get what they call water. Or wari. Sorry, it's been a few years. <laughs> they give you a kumbu seaweed broth that you pour into here and you kind of lessen the salt, right? You lessen uh -huh. the fat and then you can actually drink the broth. You can drink the broth. That okay. way you get super full. And okay. you pair it with the Sapporo, then yes, you want to go to sleep after. <laughs> this is it. I'm going to take right. the first taste. I, don't, I, I messed this up all the time. Like, okay, we're going to take the dip right there. Slowly we get into it. Mm. You can taste the pork. Phenomenal. The crispiness. It's so fresh that they literally made this in the kitchen. Like these are not your conventional uh, microwave or fried. They literally hand make this and serve it fresh on the platter. Cheers. Like the most important thing when you're eating ramen is that you got to scoop up from the bottom. You get all the flavor, you get things mixed up. It ruins the pretty picture, but you got to get down there. Look at these noodles. These are the straight noodles. You also got wavy if you more into that texture, but let's take a bite here. This is going to be hot, man. It's smoky, but it's light. It's not overpowering. It's not like it's not like there's actually something burnt in your food. You know, um, it's really good. It's got it's got levels of like mud. We gotta take this all the way in. Let it simmer. Let it swim, and take it all in. Mm. Oh man. Yep. You can definitely feel the heat. As you can see, already, the red peppers, right, absorbs this side of these noodles with green onion. All the flavors in there, in your mouth. Fantastic. Stay tuned. I have but that's because because I added the spicy miso, right? Because like so that's not always normal. You know what I mean? Okay, because okay. I usually have the spice. Okay, okay. Right? I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it out. Okay, what's up, man? So uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Who you are. Right, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I came into this business when I was 18. I was just walking down the street and I saw them constructing the thing. I walked in and I was like, hey, you know, got a job? And uh, I didn't really know anything about food. I like food. I like eating. Uh, so that, that, that's that. Like, and I've been here since 2024. That was 2018. Six years. To the date, I think October is when we started here. Open soft, soft serve. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's about it. Okay, okay. So my another question is, how long did it took you to say like, okay, I'm I'm at a different level than I started out. Like, what type of trainings did you undergo through? Was it hard, difficult, easy, medium? Go for it. Yeah. It really took a point during like COVID actually, because we were really short staffed. We were only working like one to two people total all day, and during that time is uh. I'm gonna get a little personal, but I got sick. I have a uh, chronic uh, kidney disease stage four, so my my whole body would swell up, and I would just be like waddling everywhere, even when working. And uh, so during that time, I really put into perspective or thought, oh wow, like work work is really tough, and especially if somebody's sick, you know. So during that time, I really wanted to focus on perfecting what I can do and how I can do it, and then now it's easier. Okay, okay, and um. Continue on, continuing on with, from what you said with COVID, right? What are some of the difficult like uh, decisions that every restaurant goes through, including this restaurant? Like, let's say you guys got to do more Uber Eats orders or there's less customers coming in. So how do you cater to that type of like setting? So what really helped us a lot was to go. Yeah, like yeah, to go beer, to go everything. Everybody like, like coming in during the time, taking it and like just dipping, you know? And uh, I'm going to be honest, I uh, 
I used to give a little deals here and there, and it would uh, it would make people more comfortable during the tough times, you know. So like, yeah, I mean, just making the customer feel comfortable was what brought them back during those tough times. So it's just customer service in general. Okay, okay. You seem like a very very humble man that you went through a humble beginnings and now look at you and now we're here. So let me ask you this: for the next chapter of your life, would you still be an employee, or one day would you like to open your own business? Or a ramen shop anywhere. What are your some thoughts and intentions on that? Actually, if my boss ever thinks about franchising, I'm all, all for that. I'd probably even go run another another store for it. Like, I love this place. I love the environment, and like my boss has been the best ever since I've been here. Yeah. So really, it, he is the one that showed me what or how a restaurant should be run, ran. And that's what inspired me also to be here or how I became, I guess, per se. Yep, that's perfect. And I appreciate you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for being on them. That's yep. crazy. All right. Well, what was like the the next chapter of your life that you wanted to say like, hey, I'm done with this um, job. I want to move on or... Um, you know, that's, that's a good question. I think it, I think uh, it was really personal for a lot of us to work here. I, I worked with a lot of friends, and um, it was just kind of turning into a, a new stage of life. You know, we we wanted kind of different things. Um, my my friend group. It's not <laughs> not like a relationship or anything, but you know, I kind of wanted to grow and try something new. And um, some of my friends kind of didn't want to, you know, want to be the same people from high school. So I decided to try working at a different place, learn a new type of ramen, right? Um, I ended up working at three or four, four ramen shops after, after Kashiwa here. Um, and then I went to school. So...